In this tutorial, we're going to go over the timeline in the animation workspace and how to edit frames in the timeline. In the animation workspace, in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see in this uh, toolbar area, there's this button here that looks like little frames of film. And you click that, that opens up the timeline. I've already shot a little animation here so you can see the frames. You can see the playhead playing through the frames. And at the end of the playhead is this blue camera icon. That represents the live view. So if I go to my keypad and step using the 1 and 2 key, you can see that these are shot frames. And then when I get to position 23 here, frame 23, you're actually looking at the live view. I can put my hand out here in front. In fact, I'm going to just, so we know we're on live, I'm going to throw some other objects in here. So that's live. And then I go back a frame, not live. If you want to pick up frames and move them, it's pretty easy. So you can just click on a frame, and when you get this um, kind of cyan border, you can pick it straight up, and that's a key to the editing here. You need to, once you grab an item, you need to go up with it, and then over, and as you glide over, you can see you have the choice of the yellow with the little yellow triangle, and that means you're going to insert edit. So that will put that frame into that spot and automatically take up the gap that you had created by taking it away. I'm going to Apple Z undo that edit. If you wanted to like erase or overwrite a frame, so I want this frame to replace, let's say, frame 17, you can come straight down in the middle and you'll get this red X. And obviously red is a little kind of a danger sign. And basically this is saying I'm going to delete your frame 17 and replace it with, well, in this case, 15. And when you do that, it leaves this gap here. You know, you'll have to move all the other frames over. If you need to grab a lot of frames at once, like in this case, to move these over, you can grab the first one in the line and do a little nudge to the right. And that picks up all those frames. I can then move them over, drop them down, and now I've taken up that gap. If you want to grab a whole set of frames, you click and then drag just right to the left, and that grabs them all. If you don't want to accidentally grab a bunch of frames, you have to remember that you select and go up and over. Now, if you need to grab, let's say, an amount of frames, you can do you know, shift click or command select, and that'll grab a bunch of frames together, and then those can be picked up and moved as well. The camera can be moved in the middle of the sequence as well. So if I pick up the camera and I insert it, now as I'm shooting new frames here in the middle, these frames will just continue to populate this area in the center and push the other frames down. So you can see I've got these frames that are just in the middle and it just keeps pushing the others down. If you wanted to simply replace a frame in the middle. So I'm going to um, delete these guys out and take this guy back to the end like we had before. If I wanted to replace a frame and then have the camera or the sort of, you know, ready to capture frame jump to the end, then you use the red overwrite. And so now if I shoot, it fills frame 16, but then jumps the ready to capture frame or the live view frame out to the end. We have another great feature, especially if you're trying to replace a frame in the middle and you're trying to reshoot it, but you have like synchronized sound. So let's say you have synchronized sound throughout your whole scene and you don't want any of these frames on the end to move when you're fixing some area in the middle and you don't want it to get messed up or you don't want frame orders to get out of whack. What you can do is, let's say you needed to reshoot frame 12 to 15, you can shift click those. And now I'm going to use the control or right click and say reshoot frames. And you can see it's, it's left a specific gap, the size that you selected. And as you shoot through here and you're replacing these frames, it's gonna get to the last frame that you want to replace and it knows not to mess with the others. So it just jumps the ready to capture live view down to the end. If you need to add a hold to a frame, you know, maybe you've got a, you know, a shot that's in black and you don't need to shoot a bunch of black before the lights come up. Instead of having to shoot multiple frames, which you can do, you can simply hover the playhead down at the bottom right hand corner and you get this little elbow arrow. And when you click down, now you'll see there's this yellow and you can drag and this will tell you that this frame is held for six frames altogether. That will 
show up in your animation and if you export a QuickTime, those holds will be in there. If you want your main frames in your frame folder to uh, be duplicated like this, you need to hit the conform. And once you hit the conform, you can see now that hold is gone. Those frames are still there, but we've actually now, instead of a virtual hold, now those frames have actually been made and are on the hard drive as separate frames and could go into After Effects or whatever compositing program you're using. Another feature we have is called hiding frames. And sometimes when you're animating and you're playing something back, you might want to just hide some frames and see how it looks. So we've got these uh, weird jump in the middle. I want to hide all these. So I selected them. This is the hide button. So now when I do playback, the playback is going to skip over those hidden frames. If you don't want to look at these frames in the timeline, if that's too confusing, we have sort of hide the hidden. <laughs> and you'll know that there's hidden frames because of this. But now we have you know, a cleaner looking timeline because we've, we've hidden those. Now deleted frames, uh, ones we've actually deleted, will show up in the delete bin. And the delete bin you can open by hitting this little trash can. And these are the frames that have been deleted. We never actually truly delete frames off the hard drive. We always keep everything that you've shot. If you wanted to find out where, like for instance, this frame here, where it was in the timeline originally shot, you can see a marker up here. This is where that frame was originally shot. Or I could click on this one and it would say, this is where that frame went. This makes it a lot easier if you've got a lot of deleted frames and you're trying to put a scene back together. Maybe you've trimmed animation too much and now you want to slow an action down and you have a, a nice little in-between frame. So you could pick that guy up and put it right back into your timeline. So this is a very easy way to get deleted frames back up into your timeline. And deleted frames are nice because you don't have your timeline with all these hidden points everywhere. And So that's how the delete bin works. If you wanted to return hidden frames and sort of unhide them, you would just select them and then hit the hide button again and that now they're unhidden. So now we've got those two frames back and I can go ahead and select that guy and this guy and say unhide that. And now those are unhidden. And the hidden frames are you know a little bit quicker to get back into your into your sequence. Usually you hide a frame that you're thinking about taking away, but you haven't decided yet. So it's not a replacement for deleting. Hidden frames really should only be used if you're trying to come up with some variations to think about or show the director. If you just, if you know the frame is bad, it's much better in Dragon Frame just to go ahead and delete it. You know it's safe and it's in the delete bin. So that's my overview of the timeline editing. In further tutorials, we'll cover lineup layers and how those interact in the timeline. Thank you.